What would happen if we combine Terminal with a web page? Well, we get LiveTerm. It is a really nice project that enables us to create websites which has custom command lines in them. Now, let's look at how we can build our own and customize it for our own liking. So, hit the like button and let's get started. First, let's look at the project requirements, which ain't much at all. All we have to do is making sure that we have the Yarn Package Manager installed. Depending on your Node.js version, the process may change a little, but regardless, it's a very simple process. All you have to do is enable or install the core pack, then set Yarn version to the latest stable version. Once you have done that, just run yarn dash dash version command in your terminal. You should see the version information. Now we are ready to move on with the project. To fetch the project, we can run the provided install script. However, I would like to do it in the traditional way. I just clone the project on my desktop and go from there. So to do it, I just use the git clone command followed by the project URL. Then I head to the project directory just like that. And finally open up the project in VS Code by using the code dot command. Now we can see the project in detail. If you have worked with Next.js before, you've probably noticed the file structure. We have public, install, demo, and so on directories. However, we are interested in the SRC folder, which contains the juiciest bits of the project. Now, if I go to that, we have few more directories. In Next.js, the page directory is where the pages are served. It is basically a path directory correlated system. So naturally, the index file is our main page. Inside that, we see a typical React structure. However, what I'm interested in is the custom components, which make this project unique. As you can see, the input and history components are not default ones. If I scroll up, there we can see that there are references from the components directory. So let's quickly look into that. There we have the input file. And as you can see, this file contains all the basic terminal logic, which is brilliant because if I want to make my own version of a custom command line project, I can just use this as a component and build on top of that. So as you can see, this is the beauty of open source and module based projects. Anyways, now fire up the project and let's look at what we are working with. To do it, we need to first install the required dependencies. To do that, I quickly open up my terminal and type the yarn install command. Once that's done, we should see that the errors like these will be resolved. And there we go. To run the project, I type command yarn dev and now it is started and it's serving on localhost 3000. So if I go there, we can see that it is working properly. Now let's begin configuring it. To do it, we need to open up the config.json file. There we have some various parameters, like we can change bunch of URLs, adjust theme colors and so on. But to keep this video concise, I will be changing only few of them. So let's start off by changing the title. If I change that and save it, we can see that the title in the tab changed. Next let's change the ASCII. And if I were to do that, as you can see, nothing changed. And that is because it's a custom property that needs additional changes. To do it, let's search ASCII on our directory and go to the sumfetch file. There we can see that the ASCII variable is directly correlated with the sumfetch command. By default, it prints out the live term version. However, since we changed it, let's customize it for our own liking. To do that, we just add another if statement and set our ASCII value, which is git guild. Then we modify the default one to keep things simple and only change the text. And finally, clean up the code a bit. Once I save it and execute the sumfetch command in the application, there we go, we have the modified version. Now let's get back to the configuration. This time, let's change the GitHub URL. And there, all we had to do is just put our username. In this demo, I will be using my old GitHub account. Once that's done, we can go to our application and execute the GitHub command. And as you can see, it will open up the GitHub account in a new tab. At this point, we learned how to do the basic configuration. However, we still have an issue, and that is this giant ASCII text. This is something that we cannot change by simple variable editing. We need to do something kind of differently this time. So to do it, we first need to generate an ASCII text. So I go to this website and generate a random one, then copy it into my clipboard. By the way, you can find this site and the project link in the description down below. Anyways, I head back to our project and open up the comments file. It should be under the utils bin directory. Inside that file, I scroll all the way down and replace the default one with our new one, then save it. Again, if I were to go to our app, there we have it. And that's basically it. Rest is all up to your imagination. There are lots of things that can be done by using this project. Also, one more thing, since this is a Next.js project, you can easily deploy it on Vercel without any efforts. If you want to learn more about that, just let me know and I can make a video about that as well. In the end, I hope you have enjoyed it and find it helpful. If that is the case, make sure to hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.